Hi. Is it recording? Yes, bitch. Hi guys, I'm Gasha. Welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our coffee times to discuss books and horror. And today I'm here to give you 10 book recommendations if you love Saw. It's coffee time. So the new Saw movie is coming out soon, Saw 10. Yes, there's already 10 movies. And I have been re-watching the franchise in order to get ready for the new one and do a ranking and everything. Like I am immersing myself in the franchise. And when I watched the first Saw movie, it had such a big impact. I think that movie managed to really get everyone because of how it was executed. If you've never seen it, do not get into any spoilers, go and watch it. And yeah, so I am here today to bring you 10 book recommendations if you, like me, love the Soul franchise or if you don't watch movies, if you like books that are set in scenarios where people are trapped in places and they have to play games or go through traps in order to survive. Unlike the slasher movies of the 1980s or the exploitation horror films of the 1970s, the modern wave of torture film is mostly highly stylized violence with landscapes designed for and devoted to pure punishment. Later on, in 2004, we got Saw, which kicked off the mainstream US torture wave. We have other movies like The Collector, Hostel, anything from Rob Zombie and The Human Centipede. Most recently, we also got Terrifier, who has changed the game when it comes to torture porn. Even though in the recent years, things when it comes to torture porn horror have gone a little bit quieter or movies that are very graphic and gory, we did get an amazing Evil Dead rise. And like I said, we got the Terrifier movies, but now we're finally getting Saw 10, which promises to take us back to that time and that promises to be something for fans of the original movies. And with that in mind, I decided that it would be fun to recommend you guys some books that have that kind of vibe. First, we have The Housemates by Ian Rob Wright, and this one has been described Saw meets Big Brother. What you're gonna get from this book is revenge in games, which are kind of the pillars in which the Saw franchise is based. It is 10 days, 12 competitors, and 2 million pounds in cash as a reward. So Damien, one of the people trapped there, thinks this is going to be the perfect opportunity for him to actually, you know, get the money that he needs. And he's not so mad about it, you know, he's like, yeah, let's go, let's do it, let's get the money. But then he realizes that mm, probably not everybody's gonna make it there out of life and that is when he starts to question if it was actually worth it to go there. He is trapped in a house with 11 other strangers in a voice that is known to them as the landlord. And this voice is gonna tell the contestants what to do and that is when Damien is going to realize that he's no longer competing for the money, he is competing to save his own life. And then there were none by Agatha Christie and I decided to rekindle this classic. I know a lot of people have not read Agatha Christie. I know some people want to get into it. And this is one of those perfect ones because this book has inspired so many other books and so many movies. And it is one of the originals kind of like trapped um, murder mysteries. And it is one that I would say you can definitely start with if you want to read Agatha Christie. Now, granted, this one is not like the gore fest that Saw is, but it is a great murder mystery thriller. So this might be perfect for the ones of you guys out there that are not ready for too much body horror. There are 10 strangers that have been summoned in a little island. It is a private island and the owner is a millionaire, that is the guy that has summoned them there, but when the, the people get to the island they realize that this millionaire is nowhere to be seen. All the guests have something in common, a secret from their past that might connect them together, that might explain why they are all there, and we shall see who starts talking first. One by one the guests are being targeted and they're going to have to figure out the mystery before there will be none. Inny Mini by MJ Arledge and this is another mystery thriller horror so another one that is for those of you that don't want like 
a lot of body gore that just want a murder mystery. Two people have been abducted, they have been locked in together and left alone with just one gun. So only one of them we will make it out alive. And this is one of those books that has a detective as one of the main characters trying to solve the mystery. So if you are somebody that loves thrillers that have detectives as a protagonist, this might be one that is perfect for you. It seems that um, whoever is playing these games with the people is abducting people at random, as that is what it seems to the detective at first. So she's gonna have to try to figure out why these people are being targeted and who is doing this to them. Puzzle House by Duncan Rodson, and this is one that I read myself not long ago, and I think it does fit the premise as well. Um, I thought for me it was a mix between Saw and National Treasure because all of the different puzzles that they had to solve um, in order to survive, and it does have kind of like the same premise. You have a group of strangers that have been summoned to a millionaire's house, and they have been promised that if they play the game, and if they win, they will get the whole inheritance. Um, so they are all there to win the money. When they get there, and this is the house of a millionaire that has uh, become a millionaire on the gaming industry, he designs puzzles, like high-tech puzzles, and every room that they go into is gonna be a different puzzle. The thing is, as you know, almost like in the movie Cube, if you've seen it, probably in every room somebody's not gonna make it out alive somebody's gonna have to sacrifice so this is kind of like the vibe that the book has and i had such a good time because i love the movie cube i think it's fantastic i would rewatch it anytime love it so this one really did it for me and if you're somebody that like me likes this kind of stuff i think you will enjoy it then i'm gonna recommend you in the dark by richard layman you know guys i love richard layman i love how disturbing he is so if you um, are not ready for disturbing books, maybe this one is not gonna be for you. We have Jane. Jane is a young librarian that one day discovers an envelope and that kind of triggers a game. So she goes from discovering one envelope with a little bit of money and an next clue. She finds a second envelope with more money than the first and another clue to play games. All these clues in the envelopes are signed by Master of Games, but this is not an ordinary game that Jane is playing. Basically, every time that she gets to the next envelope, this Master of Games is demanding more and more things from her. Things are criminal, things that are, let's say, not morally acceptable, so she's gonna have to make decisions. And that is a big part of the Saw franchise. It's mostly people that have to make decisions. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that they're fair, but, um, you know, Jigsaw is just presenting them with the game and he's giving them a choice. <laughs> Probably both options they have are horrible, uh, but you're still given a choice. Then we have The Game by Derek Armstrong, and this is a thriller that has kind of a little bit of humor into it. This one is based on a reality TV show and basically a killer is gonna prey on the contestants of this TV show. The TV show follows um, some strangers that are all locked in a haunted mansion. It is a live broadcast reality TV show in America that is very popular and you have these strangers that are trapped there uh, for six months and yeah, you need to read it to figure out who makes it out alive. And I like that this one is based on a TV show because when things are live and being broadcasted, it adds kind of like an element of tension to it in a way. And it makes it maybe even more uncomfortable because these people know that they're being watched as they're doing all of these things. I mean, Jigsaw still spies on, you know, his contestants. <laughs> but in this case, you're being broadcasted to, you know, the whole country. Then we have the Angel of Vengeance series by Wade Garrett and this one is splatterpunk horror so you know what you're getting yourself into. We are in a dim lighted cell and a man awakens there unsure what has happened to him or why he is there but surrounding him in this cell are barbaric gadgets elements and he already kind of knows that this is not gonna be a fun game to play. The captor is Seth, and Seth is a man that has decided it is his life's purpose 
to, you know, judge people that have done horrible things. He thinks that the justice system has failed us and there is a lot of criminals out there, rapists, people that have done horrible things that get not punished. So he has decided it is his job to seek them out, lock them and punish them. So that's the angel of vengeance part. And if you like like I said, split a splatter prank horror. This might be a series you want to check. The Escape Room by Megan Golden. I think the name already tells you what you can expect here. And obviously we are talking about an escape room where you have to play to get out alive. We follow some co-workers for a very successful company. They're trying to celebrate their success and they decide that they can go and play escape room. They're also very competitive. So they think it's a great exercise um, and a good activity to play together. But obviously when the lights go off and the game begins, they realize that this is no conventional escape room and they are there to fight for their lives. On top of that there are secrets that are going to be revealed about our characters that is going to also kind of change the way that they make decisions during the games. So this is one that's going to be again great for people that loves this type of stories where people are trapped, secrets are coming out, and there are deadly games also involved. So it's just perfect. Getting Away With Murder by Catherine Foxfield. I had to mention this one again. I read it this year and absolutely loved it. And it has kind of like the same concept. There is this new company that is going to open its doors that offers kind of very special escape rooms that are kind of designed for different types of people and they have an, um, an AI that assigns the people to their rooms based on the things that they like. Um, and there's it's a company that it's about to start. They're really excited. They still haven't tested the rooms, but then a couple of people that have a lot more in common that they anticipated are all summoned to test the rooms, but they didn't know that they were gonna end up fighting for their lives. So again, we have a group of strangers that have been summoned to a location thinking that they were going to see the new escape rooms and ended up just trapped inside of them and having to talk to each other to figure out how to get out of the rooms, but also revealing secrets that affect each other. It might also change again the way that they react to things, the way they make decisions to go through the rooms. I thought the rooms were excellent. They were really good described. You could really immerse yourself into the rooms. They were really original. I love them and it was quite violent as well for being a YA, which I appreciated. And this is one that I devoured because it was just so much fun. And last we have Bad Games by Jeff Menapace and participation in these games is not an option, is a must. We have the Lambert family. They're going to a house on the lake to have a nice weekend getaway, you know, go to the lake, go fishing, barbecue, just spend some quality time together as a family. And you know how when these things start in horror, you know they're not gonna end up being the happy family that we all wanted, you know? You know things are just gonna go south. Then we also have two brothers that are heading to the same location and they have other kind of concept for fun in their heads, they want to kidnap, they want to torture, you know, they want to get people, um, they want to hunt people. It's like another kind of vibe <laughs> what they're looking for for that weekend. And they're all kind of gonna meet and they're probably not gonna like each other. This is an intense psychological thriller and another one that, this one might even be perfect uh, for summer as well because of the location. Um, so you might wanna put that on your list for next summer if you're looking for things like this. Um, but yeah, this was the last one that I have for you guys in the list. All right, you guys, so I hope that you enjoyed the list. Let me know down below if you love Saw, the franchise in general, which one was your favorite part, um, which other books do you feel like fit the same concept that the Saw movies have. So let's talk about it in the comments down below. Thank you guys as always so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next coffee time. Bye.